Welcome to Precision Points, an egg tech podcast from PrecisionEggReviews.com. I'm your host, Morgan Sager. In every episode, we strive to bring you unbiased precision egg information and ideas. And on today's episode, I had the opportunity to sit down with Dr. John Fulton from The Ohio State University. John is a professor at Ohio State and has been a big advocate in helping Precision Egg Reviews really get off the ground and get their entire system organized and started so that way we're providing content that's relevant to growers. We plan on having John on the podcast several times to really leverage his expertise, but today I just wanted to give you a minute to get to know him, hear a little bit of his background and some of the visions he has not only for this podcast, but Precision Egg, or as he calls it, Digital Egg in general. I hope you enjoy this episode. All right. Welcome to Precision Points. Today, I have the opportunity to talk with Dr. John Fulton. So, John, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Morgan. Pleasure to be here today. Do you mind taking a couple of minutes to just introduce yourself and some of the things you've been working on? Yeah, so I, uh, I work for Ohio State University, and I'm in the Food, Ag, and Biological Engineering Department as a, a faculty member, and I also carry the title of Extension Specialist across the state. Uh, primarily working in precision agriculture. My uh, kind of responsibilities include teaching, uh, doing extension work here in Ohio and across the country, and then doing research uh, primarily focused on crop production for Ohio farmers. Okay. How long have you been with Ohio State? Uh, Five years I've been at Ohio State. So uh, it's been exciting. Ohio State has a lot of opportunities, and uh, you know we've been able to really build a nice team at Ohio State that, that, well, today we we call it digital ag. We used to call it precision ag, but with all the data topics and analytical things that are going on with cloud and and wireless connections, uh, digital ag is becoming a popular term in how we describe what's happening in agriculture. Sure. And then you um, live on your family farm as well. Is that correct? I I do live uh, on our, um, I should say, adjacent to our family farm and uh, grew up there and then um, and kind of back here um, for five years and it's exciting to be back serving the farmers of Ohio. Good well and it's, it's interesting how you're able to kind of marry what you're doing as your career with things you get experience you know hands-on experience on some of your own operation. Yeah yeah and, and kind of keep grounded and uh, humble too because uh, without getting out there, I mean, agriculture is changing rapidly, uh, especially with the introduction of all these new technologies that are being integrated in the machines and sensors. And and uh, so it's exciting. And to your point, it gives an opportunity to get out in the field and kick the tires, if we want to call it that, and, and dig in the soil a little bit, too. Sure. I, th- I think that what you what you just said is really important, staying grounded. I think um, you know, when we, in my past career, I got to help roll out some, some new products and launches. And when you're on the development side of things, you know, the sky's the limit of things you think growers might want to do. Uh, <laughs> so actually being hands-on and seeing what would be practical, I'm sure, um, influences your research a lot. Yeah. And we've, uh, you know, we want to be engaged with growers in our program and we are breaking in over 30 counties today with research that are specifically on farm. And not only does that give us an opportunity to stay grounded, it, it really gives us a chance to, to visit with growers and understand what questions they have and, and hopefully transition those questions into projects to help not only us to learn, but more importantly, help them to learn and figure out whether it's technology or practices or how they manage inputs or whatever, making sure they're being sound and giving them the information they need to make the right decision. And, and remain profitable. And so um, with that in mind, what are, what are some of the things that you've seen really help growers move the mark? And, and is it in yield or is it in time savings? But if you had to look at a couple of like key precision egg advancements. You know, when I, when I think back of what we've been working on in the precision egg, um, there's also efficiencies for sure. You know, when we think about guidance, specifically like RTK guidance with section control today being so popular on sprayers and planters uh, and fertilizer applicators today, you know, those things have made them more efficient and at the same time uh, provided some savings too. You know, we've reduced that overlap 
so those things have really impacted not only improved the bottom line, but we've been able to do research in the past to show that, hey, you could even see a little bit of a yield bump in those areas that where you were maybe double planting or uh, things like that or double spraying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the maybe a cost savings from like a seed chemical perspective, but then also yield increase from not overpopulating things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Reducing the competition, those kinds of things. Or uh, in a case, in some case, you know, you, you come around and you harvest uh, the in rows and, you know, if you kind of got a double planted area, ultimately you're going to be pushing down some, some corn stalks and that's either lost, right? You, uh, mm -hmm. Ears or ears uh, are lost. So uh, those have, you know, uh, when we think uh, in terms of the, the statistics, when we see, and you think about guidance, uh, Verberate is another popular technology that, that, a uh, significant population is using out there. And then this auto, auto section control or automatic section control is, has become almost the standard. I mean, when you buy this equipment, those things are already integrated into it today. Yeah. So, um, you know, you talked a lot about efficiency and for a long time, the equipment was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it required <laughs> more of that section control and things like that to manage the overlap that maybe wasn't as big when we were running smaller equipment. Um, what do you see the future of like smaller, more autonomous type vehicles? So, yeah, and we're doing research. Uh, Dr. Shear's group and our group are really looking into autonomy is a, a big topic right now. That, in, um, But, you know, the future, when we think about it, we, we're thinking smaller equipment that works 24 seven. And, you know, what may have been one large tractor, you may have four to six small um, robots doing equivalent type work. Um, but I do see, you know, as we advance, you know, 10 to 20 years and, and autonomy robots uh, become more accepted and available to growers, I think we'll eventually get smaller and, and they'll work as teams out in the field. Um, this might be a little bit off the wall question, but is there any one thing that you wish growers would start doing or stop doing right now when it comes to <laughs> precision egg? Well, you know, like anything, technology has to make sense at each individual farm. And, you know, if there's one thing that I've learned over the years, you know, what may work at one grower's farm because of the, the way they manage and the practices and the equipment they have may not work at another grower's farm. So there's not like this silver bullet that works um, so I don't know if I'd say there's nothing that, but I think the ultimate goal is, is make sure that you're selecting some of this newer technology, evaluating it, and that it's going to serve you well. And experiences over the years for, you know, my research, we've seen some technologies adopted probably a little too early by growers and it didn't work out. It really wasn't the, the farmer's fault or the technology's fault. It just didn't fit the application and, and their circumstance at the time. So you got to make sure you're doing your homework and, and uh, selecting technology that, that's going to work well on your farm. And in general, when we find, uh, what we find is technology is going to pay for itself over time, uh, especially once it, you, know, you look at today and you're buying the newer modern equipment, it's already there. It's kind of upon you to take advantage of it if you want to. Do you have any rule of thumb in what that turnaround time should look like for it to pay for itself? Uh, we've been able to show uh, anywhere from a one to five year, a lot of times on some of this. I mean, I think some of this is not cheap. I mean, you take planters, for example, and I want to, I want to upgrade to the modern technology on a planter. You know, you could be talking a thousand to 2000 a row unit you know, to add on something or replace, you know, to upgrade. It's not cheap, but uh, so I, you know, it's hard to pinpoint exactly the, the, the payback period, but we've been able to, somewhere between one to five years, a lot of times you'll see, see the technology pay for itself. So when, when I was just getting started on this podcast, the mm -hmm. people at precisionegreviews.com told me that you had really been helping them out um, and kind of contributing with ideas and data. Can you kind of walk me through what that relationship looks like? And if you have any, I guess, kind of overarching vision for what we, what we were trying to accomplish here? 
when when we've had an opportunity to talk and 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 uh, you know very actively trying to organize and make something that's usable, I think, by by growers or practitioners that are using this and giving them the ability to provide quick feedback. They've done a really good job of that. Uh, you know, it, it gets hard. A lot of times you think precision ag and there's all these different technologies. So just kind of organize it into uh, topics and, and things that helps people say, oh yeah, you know, that goes, I understand when I hear the word guidance, for example, or section control, um, that I think, They've worked really hard to make sure that when they, when you see topics that you're not as a user when you go on a site, at least from my viewpoint, that I'm overwhelmed immediately. Hey, I, I hey, this is where I'm kind of using it. I can give quick feedback on it. So they've done a good job of 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 kind of making sure all the technologies are kind of there and ready to go for people to give feedback, but organizing it where it's very usable, very uh, and uh, identifiable for, for a user to, to be able to, to kind of navigate to maybe what they're using or if they're looking at buying or purchasing something, they can navigate and see that feedback real quick on that particular product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, especially if you're thinking about the cost investment, um, it makes sense not wanting to go into that blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, great. Well, I appreciate um, you hopping on here today and kind of walking through some of this with me. And I really look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. To hear more podcasts like this, please rate, review, and subscribe to Precision Points. You can go to precisioneggreviews.com for our show notes from this episode. Also, read expert advice from the blog and share your experiences with Precision Egg tools. Let's grow together.